A while ago on the channel, I spoke about a certain ceiling fan incident in a video about horror stories involving homemade pleasure devices. I recently retold that story as a TikTok and an Instagram reel when a friend messaged me asking, is this just what it's like to be a guy? Now, if you've watched videos of mine in the past, you know that this particular type of compulsion doesn't necessarily discriminate by gender. Women get up to plenty of their own filth, often even worse. But yeah, as a dude, there is that cycle of always chasing something bigger and better. And there's just so many of these incidents you can see online involving horrifying stories of what happens with homemade toys, or for that matter, ones you bought that just weren't well maintained. These stories all seem to go sideways in their own unique, special ways, so I've decided to talk about some more of them. So for today's episode of Tales from the Internet, let's take a look at some more online meat wallet mishaps. This video is sponsored by Lilo. Lilo is a leader in luxury pleasure toys for both men and women, and they've recently introduced the new F1S V3 Male Pleasure Console. It's a motorized device that sits on your hammer and then goes to work. No thrusting or hand motion required. Let me go over what makes this thing so special. You see, the smoothness of insertion has been enhanced due to two features. First, you got this special liquid silicone that realistically mimics the vaginal sensation. It adjusts to everyone's shape perfectly. It's a must-have if you're seeking a realistic experience. Inside, it also has flexible ribs. These ribs eliminate air pockets inside the device, which is the most common annoyance that people report with this type of toy, because it makes fart noises, and it also creates this vacuum that isn't a great sensation. Combining these features adds a softness, stretchiness, and increased durability to the device. And, due to large popular demand, and in the notes they sent me, they emphasize large. They've also made a bigger XL version of this device. I'm sure after this video, the demand for that will increase even more. And it also has an AI interactive mode. You can connect it to your phone and have it send information from your device's motion. It then uses this data to adjust the intensity and vibration patterns based on their research, giving you the most pleasure possible. And it's also twice as powerful as its predecessor, the F1S version 2. I actually got some great news that Lilo just sent me before publishing this video. They're hosting a massive sex toy giveaway for a new newsletter subscribers. They're giving away 1,000 toys. You can win a luxury sex toy or an exclusive discount. Just follow the link in the description and subscribe now, and good luck. This first story actually involves a legitimate device that was purchased from a store, but it was horribly mishandled. This Reddit poster mentions that he bought an artificial vag from a store in February of 2018, and he used it regularly for about three months. At that point, he starts to get bored of it, and also he gets a girlfriend that replaces the toy. Then one day, he gets bored, so he starts cleaning up his apartment. Then he comes across a box of old stuff. Inside this box, of course, is the device that he put away and never looked at it again for almost exactly a year. I promise it's not mold this time. So he takes the toy out and puts it aside to use later, thinking he's gonna run it back one last time. That time comes, and then he realizes he's out of loop. Now with this sort of thing, you're always supposed to use lube, and you're about to find out why. He decides he's just gonna go in dry. And he does, as deep as he can manage. When he gets in there, he feels a little tickle on his tip. In a panic, he pulls out of it super fast. Doing this gives him what feels like a rug burn. But it's not over yet. He then notices that there's a spider sitting on the tip of his pecker. So he just immediately, instinctually flicks it off. He hadn't cut his nails for a while, and in doing so, he scraped himself, damaging his member once again. He yells and the spider runs away. And he concludes the story. My dick now hurts, and a spider is now loose in my house. He later adds an edit, noting that he killed a spider, but he's not sure if it's the dick spider. And also, he threw the toy away. And that's why you should always clean your toys before you use them too. Now it's time for the ladies. T-I-F-U by painting the walls of my inner walls with glitter. So this poster on a throwaway account bought herself a dildo. She had bought a bunch of toys in the past, but this was the first regular dildo. And she felt like she still had to spice it up a little bit. Then a week later, she's shopping at the grocery store with her roommate. When they're at checkout, she notices one of those little glitter stress balls. You know the ones, you squeeze them and you see old liquid get close up to the thin layer of rubber. But what really gets her attention is how it's covered in these little plastic bumps. And then she has a brain blast. What if combined dildo with bumpy glitter ball? Surely those plastic bumps would bring the pleasure to another level. Later that night, she's alone in her bedroom. She's sitting in the dark, and she cuts open the ball and stretches it out over the dildo. Her crafting experience increases by 10 points, and then she rewards herself. She's very disappointed to find that her scientific theory was wrong. 
Those bumps added absolutely nothing to the experience. So she pulls the ball off the dildo and throws it away. It's the next night that she claims is when the horror must have entered her body. That night, she uses the toy once again. This time, after she's done, she goes to the bathroom and cleans up a little bit. She notices some sparkles, but she assumes the dildo was just like that. She doesn't think anything of it until a few weeks later. That's when she starts her period. I started my period, and to my shock and disgust, waking up to ruin the bloody underwear was enough, but everything, and I mean everything, was covered with glitter. It was all over the place. I've got a pretty heavy flow, and it was like I opened up one of those prank birthday cards like, hooray, you're on your period, and now I fear for my life. I feel like a human pinata, but instead of candy, I'm spewing out glitter every time I go to the bathroom. You see, for some reason, she had assumed that the contents of the stress ball had been safely discarded when she threw out the stress ball. She didn't think that, you know, the stuff inside the glitter ball would stay on the dildo. The reason why there wasn't much glitter to note on that dildo when she went to go clean it was because it was all inside her now. She was shocked that it stayed in there for two weeks. And if any of you ever dealt with glitter, you know you can't just wipe that stuff away. As one person noted, glitter is often referred to as craft herpes for a reason. Now, of course, a lot of people didn't believe the story and accused her of being a 40-year-old man who has no idea how a woman's body works. For obvious reasons, she didn't want to post her face to prove herself, so she made a list of things to prove she's a woman. Whenever my boobs hurt, even in the slightest, I fear I might have breast cancer. It runs in the family. Discharge is borderline bleach. Sharp-ass pains during periods. I kid you not, I just had one after finishing writing this comment. Why is one more stretched out than the other? She also noted that she only saw the glitter for about three days after the period, and spewing out was a bit of an exaggeration. In any case, she wasn't too concerned about it anymore, but set up an appointment with a gynecologist. Two days later, she makes an update post. That day, she had woken up with a severe yeast infection. She describes the pain as being like someone took a tree branch, set it on fire, and shoved it up her. So although most of the glitter was now gone, its impact was still very much felt. And her gynecologist appointment was still a week away. Some in the comments suggested that the glitter might have caused thousands of tiny lacerations. And depending on what it was made of, may have promoted bacterial growth. Some had some suggestions, like douching or monistat. Others suggested making an emergency appointment so she didn't have to wait a week, but she said she couldn't afford that. So instead, she was just going to take some ibuprofen and hope for the best. And that was her last post on that account, so it's not really clear what became of her. For our last story, we'll talk about a guy who had an unfortunate incident with a homemade cock sleeve. He begins by saying that he loves his fiance, but her sex drive is much lower than his is. It's definitely not something he'd be willing to leave her over, but it has to be dealt with. So he's taken to cranking his hog a lot. Of course, as is often the case with this, he starts to get bored of the same old, same old. You need something new. You gotta experiment. Then one day, his fiance is out and he has four hours to kill Home Alone by himself. He creates a device that he refers to as the Cumtraption. He doesn't go into specifics of what the Cumtraption was, but he says he built it based off of tips from the internet. So he inserts himself into the Cumtraption. He says that at first it felt a little uncomfortable, it was too tight. But after he broke it in a little bit, it stretched out and was feeling a lot better. And then he finishes. He pulls out of the contraption and makes a horrifying discovery. There's blood in the semen. He's never had anything close to this happening before, and he's freaking out. And then he goes to the bathroom. Still in shock, I started taking a piss. But something felt weird. I felt a sort of blockage, which cleared almost at once. But when it did, a giant blood clot came out of my dick. There was no pain, just blood, emerging from somewhere it definitely shouldn't. After cleaning up what he describes as a murder scene, he quickly goes to Google to look up his symptoms. I either have cancer of the penis, testicle, or prostate. Or, I burst a blood vessel in my blood vessel. <laughs> Where I burst a blood vessel in my blood vessel just makes me think of when Owen Hart said, And that's why I kicked your leg out of your leg. Or I burst a blood vessel in my blood vessel when I wedged it into a great tightness. The bright red color of the blood thankfully points to the latter. Which I mean, that's reasonable because every symptom you could ever possibly look up says you might have cancer. He notes that since then his pee has had no blood in it, but he's still understandably freaking out. He says he's scared to ever have an orgasm again. My Larky says, Next time, try using a coconut. Lord Peacock, third option, you've had your first period. Congratulations. 
That was the first thought I had a few hours later once I was able to find things funny again. Well, you also had a few commenters questioning the health of his relationship with his fiance, both because of the mismatched sex drives and also because he felt the need to hide this from her. But he says he's happy about the pattern they've established and they communicate about it a lot, and that she's not the reason he wanted to hide it from her. Rather, it's that his religious upbringing instilled a great sense of shame in regards to jacking it. After some badgering, the commenters also got him to share his recipe. There are a surprising number of you degenerate bastards who want to know the methods and materials with which I constructed the offending device. For, um, academic reasons. If you feel like playing Russian roulette with your precious commodities, who am I to stop you? You'll need an appropriate length of small, sturdy cardboard tube like the ones that posters come in sometimes. A piece of one inch PVC pipe, the same length as the cardboard tube. A clean old towel, two rubber gloves, two rubber bands. I tied the tips of the gloves middle fingers together until there a glove end was sticking out both sides. I then cut a length of towel no wider than the length of the cardboard tube. Then I rolled the strip of the old towel around the pipe slash glove assembly until it was the right diameter to barely fit inside the cardboard tube. Trimmed the excess towel and ran it through. Once it was positioned correctly, I secured one glove end to the tube and pulled out the pipe, then adjusted and secured both glove openings with rubber bands. I sincerely hope you need no further instructions. Once again, it's unclear what ultimately happened to him, but I'm pretty sure he's doing okay. It seems like the big cumclot was a one-time deal. In any case, I wouldn't recommend making your own, you know, especially when I got this lovely sponsor, Lilo. But anyway, that's all for now. If you like this video, turn on notifications and check out my video about the cum canut. I'm out.